Now, along comes Bitcoin cryptocurrency. It's, it's, when I say it's harder than gold, I mean it's not just 10 times harder because it, uh, it goes 100 years without losing any of its value. I say it's harder because it's an organic nest of cybernetic hornets feeding off of encrypted energy. It's a living thing which means that the miners are going to keep upgrading their equipment. The developers are going to keep upgrading their development. The nodes are going to change. Everybody in the ecosystem is going to change. And they're changing in this terrifying Darwinian, capitalistic, libertarian, aggressive, winner-take-all, hold-no-bars, you know, no, you know, no one company, country, companies, holding like the... Like, I've been CEO. I thought I was right. I was wrong. You could be the most brilliant CEO in the world. You know, anything that's controlled by a CEO is crippled. Controlled by a state is crippled. Controlled by a country, it's crippled. This entire thing is its own ecosystem. going to lose 99% of your money if you put it in cash. Okay. So we all agree on that. Okay. This is the thing that people don't say. You're going to lose for sure 85% of your money if you put it in gold. You're going to, for sure. By the way, and that you're, you're assuming that nobody invents a better chemistry for gold. We don't find gold anywhere else. Nobody invests any more money in gold mining. Nobody gets any smarter and the gold price doesn't go up too much. And if all those things are true and people still use gold, you're going to lose 85% of your money. But if human ingenuity kicks in, gold's a commodity, you're going to lose 90% of your money in gold. Now, if you put your money in Bitcoin, you're keeping it all. You're not losing anything. Once you, from, if you don't believe in fully diluted Bitcoin count, you have a 15% loss in 100 years. But if you do believe in it, there's no loss. Now let me give you another analogy. You want to cross the Atlantic. If you cross the Atlantic in a vessel made of fiat currency, it's like stitching together a bunch of inflatable rafts. You're cro By the way, you're crossing the Atlantic in an, in an inflatable boat with a leak in it. Or you want to cross the Atlantic in, in, a, in a gold vessel, you're crossing the Atlantic in a wooden ship. Oh, it's sort of good, but it's rotting, you know? It's a wooden ship. It's better than inflatable. It doesn't have a leak in it, but it's wood, and it's going to decay. It's decaying 2 3% a year. You're crossing the Atlantic in Bitcoin. It's a steel hull freighter. The thing about steel, you know, like I say to the guys, I say, well, why do I want a steel boat? They go, well, because steel is indestructible, and the welds are harder than the original steel. If you put a hole in steel and you weld it, the weld is stronger than the original material. Steel will last, as long as you maintain it, will last forever. Okay, so rubber boat, wooden boat, steel vessel. And now here's an epiphany, right? I mean, if that's not enough, right? I mean, like, there's no comparison between losing 80 to 90% of your money versus not losing any of your money. There's no comparison. But here's another epiphany. <clears throat> I'm an aeronautical engineer from MIT. I studied, I studied spaceship design. I studied aircraft design. I studied building design. <clears throat> you know, the entire science of civil engineering requires one element. Do you know what the element is? Steel. Think about it for a second. <clears throat> I build a building with, with wood. You can build a two-story building. You ever see a five-story wooden building? I built, you know, that's, that's fiat. I build a building of stone, you know, and masonry. Look at all of Europe, all of beautiful Europe. Every building in Europe, five stories, six stories. That's as far as you go, you know, with brick. What happens when I invent steel? I build a 50-story building. You think steel is twice as good as bricks? Yeah, you, you can build a 100-story building, right? 
Steel, steel is, is elemental to or instrumental to New York City. There is no New York City without steel. You, there is no skyscraper. There's no science of civil engineering. Until you invent steel, right, you could say iron maybe if you want, but, into, but without, the element, without the element of steel, there's no civil engineering. Now flip to airspace, uh, you know, aerospace. You ever see a plane made of steel? No, they don't fly. Steel is the perfect element, except for the fact it's too heavy to fly. That's why we use aluminum. No aluminum, no airplanes, no industry, nothing. Take away aluminum, the entire aviation industry goes to zero, right? Andrew Mellon made his money on aluminum. Andrew Carnegie made his money on steel. Right? These are fundamental things. These were technologists. The entire industry is based on it. Now, the gold standard, good idea in the 19th century, right? The best idea you could have in the 19th century. But I mean, just like wooden ships, pretty good idea to have wooden ships if you're the British Empire, if that's the best you can have, you know? Now, along comes Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. It's, it's, when I say it's harder than gold, I mean it's not just 10 times harder because it, uh, it goes 100 years without losing any of its value. I say it's harder because it's an organic nest of cybernetic hornets feeding off of encrypted energy. It's a living thing which means that the miners are going to keep upgrading their equipment. The developers are going to keep upgrading their development. The nodes are going to change. Everybody in the ecosystem is going to change. And they're changing in this terrifying Darwinian, capitalistic, libertarian, aggressive, winner-take-all, hold-no-bars, you know, no, you know, no one company, country, companies, holding, like the, like I've been CEO, I thought I was right, I was wrong. You could be the most brilliant CEO in the world. You know, anything that's controlled by a CEO is crippled. Controlled by a state is crippled. Controlled by a country, it's crippled. This entire thing is its own ecosystem. You know, gold is not going to get a million times smarter in the next 10 years. It's not thinking at all. It's a lump of metal lying there. Right? What's, you know, Nicholas Taleb wrote Anti Fragile. I think Taleb is brilliant. You know, I love all of his books, read every one of them twice. Right? Uh, Bitcoin is an anti fragile, evolving, evolving thing. It's the hard, it's hardest currency because it's getting continually, exponentially harder. It's getting harder. But it's also smarter stronger and faster than gold, right? It's smarter because these, com I, I can create a computer program, I can put it on a machine behind that bar and I can have it make a million trades with your crypto every night while you're sleeping and move it around, right? But I can't do it with gold. If I wanna move a hundred million dollars of gold, I gotta put it on a jet, fly it around the world. It's $250,000 to physically deliver a hundred million dollars worth of gold. I can physically deliver $100 million worth of Bitcoin in five bucks, right? Five dollars in, in 30 minutes, you know, depending upon how risk averse you are. But if I, if I want to move it, I can put a piece of software on it. By the way, Ralph, you know, when I move $100 million into a crypto exchange to buy crypto, I got to talk to like three bankers on the phone and they're asking me, they're asking me for my birthday, Ralph. You can go on Google and you can Google Michael Saylor. And do you know what the, I, you don't even have to click. Do you know what Google puts underneath the Google for my birthday? My birthday. You know, so the banking system is running about a million times slower and less secure to move this stuff around. Um, when I put it in, when I put this, this elemental energy into Bitcoin, <laughs> It's smart because it's getting smart as fast as the smartest crypto bank can program something intelligent. And I am in awe of how, of how many of these, uh, these things are going on so fast. DeFi and CeFi, right? It's not clear to me whether you're going to use DeFi or CeFi. It doesn't matter. Whatever is going to work is going to work. It's all happening, yeah. It's faster because it's dematerialized gold. 
I look at all my employees and I say, we're in the virtual wave, guys. You can now move at the speed of light and bend time and space. What are you going to do with it? Right? If, if I can actually take your $100 million worth of gold, dematerialize it, chop it into 10 million pieces, and move it around the world 100 times a second, something new is going to happen. And then it's, and it's stronger. It's stronger because... You can liquidate $100 million worth of Bitcoin on a Saturday afternoon in a foreign country, in a foreign currency. And, you know, you can do this and maybe you might take a 3% haircut. You know, you might like, oh, holy crap, it's volatile. It moved down 300 bucks. Well, 3% haircut to liquidate $100 million of gold on a Saturday afternoon. Try doing that in, in Istanbul. Try liquidating $100 million sitting in a vault in New York City, in Tokyo, on an afternoon, on a weekend.